Hi, today I'd like to talk about battery monitors for your RV or trailer. Alright, I'm Mike with the Logan and the Hobo RV Adventure Channel. Why are battery monitors important? Battery monitors are important because uh, with any battery system, especially with a 12 volt uh, flooded lead acid or any flooded lead acid battery system, it's important to know how much battery capacity you have and a state of the charge of the batteries because if you uh, discharge the batteries too much, uh, it's gonna damage the batteries and the batteries are gonna stop uh, holding a charge and you're gonna have to get new batteries. So with your flooded lead acid uh, batteries, which is what I have, and so that's mainly what I'll focus on today. Um, like I mentioned before, you don't want to discharge the batteries more than about 60%. Uh, uh, I've heard you can take it down uh, to 50%, but no lower than 50% uh, maximum without damaging the batteries. Uh, it's important to know what their state of charge is, how much charge you have left, uh, so you don't damage the batteries, and so you can know um, <clears throat> how much off-grid camping you can do because uh, that's really the goal, is to be able to camp uh, off the grid where you want, uh, not surrounded by other people. So the battery monitor I have is uh, by Victron Energy. It's the BMV 700. Um, another popular Victron model is the BMV 712. The big difference between um, the BMV 700 that I have and the BMV 712 uh, is the 712 is set up to be Bluetooth compatible with your smartphone. And so you can use an app on your smartphone to monitor everything. The 700, which I have, um, doesn't come set up for uh, Bluetooth, and so you just use the display head. Um, the display head works fine for me. Um, in a lot of ways, I try to keep things uh, just simple and easy and basic. Um, you know, the less technology that's involved, uh, in my opinion, the better off it's going to be as far as things not going wrong, or at least that's uh, my preference. So there's several ways that you can monitor the state of charge in your battery. Uh, you can simply just get a multimeter and you can put uh, the positive on the positive side of the battery and the negative on the negative side of the battery and get a voltage reading. Uh, depending on what the voltage is, that will tell you the percentage of capacity uh, left in the battery. Uh, also, you can get a simple voltage uh, meter display that you can plug into uh, like a cigarette uh, port adapter, 12 volt adapter in your RV or trailer or uh, maybe one that plugs into a USB port that will measure the voltage coming through the DC power system and give you a reading that way. Um, also you can install just a simple uh, relatively inexpensive uh, voltage meter that will do the same thing and it will just be permanently hardwire uh, installed. Uh, sometimes those even will give you <clears throat> come with extra outlets, uh, the 12 volt cigarette lighter style outlet or USB port outlet. So what we're looking at here is the battery monitor in action. Just scroll through the settings that I use uh, real quickly. So this is the state of charge 99.97% and that's the amp hours being used or watts being used, number of amps being used. Uh, current voltage is 12.56 and that's the amount of hours uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's the amount of hours left that the batteries will run under the current load. And back to the state of charge, 99.7%. So I'd like to talk about the two different types of battery monitor systems I mentioned in this video. The first type is just a very simple measure the voltage of the batteries, and you can use that voltage to get a corresponding state of charge. This is very cheap. If you already own a multimeter, then you're all set or the type of voltage meter that plugs into a socket or is hardwired is very cheap, usually between $15 and $30. However, if you're looking to get more information about your batteries, if you want more accurate information, um, then I would recommend getting a battery monitor that uses a shunt, uh, the Victron Energy model, or there's other companies. Uh, as long as the battery monitor uses a shunt, then it's gonna provide very accurate, detailed information on the batteries. Uh, for mine, I think I paid around $150, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so the installation of the battery monitor is pretty straightforward. There's just three pieces, the display head, the shunt, and the data cable. Uh, the data cable plugs into the shunt, and then the other end of the data cable plugs into uh, 
uh, the back of the display head. Uh, they go together pretty simply. The main thing you want to be concerned about is the negative battery cable coming off the battery goes to the shunt and then another cable goes from the shunt directly to the ground on the frame. There should be nothing else in that line. There's also a small red wire that uh, goes from the shunt to the positive side of the battery to power the unit. The display head is quite easy to install. You drill a hole wherever you want to mount it and stick the display head through the hole and it's threaded on the back end and there's a bezel ring that just threads on and holds it securely in place. If you drill the hole too big or if you like the look there is a faceplate that also comes with the unit. My RV is a, a, it's a travel trailer and I have the batteries on the tongue of the trailer. Um, I'll do another video another time uh, specifically about my battery system and my off-grid system but uh, for the sake of what we're talking about here I replaced the 12 volt hybrid marine deep cycle battery that came with the trailer uh, with two six volt golf cart, golf cart batteries. Um, those golf cart batteries are on the tongue of the trailer and I also wanted to fit the shunt, the battery monitor shunt on the tongue of the trailer. Um, and so what I did is I purchased a commercial grade heavy duty box that carries both of my six volt golf cart batteries. Uh, that's mounted to the tongue of the trailer uh, and then I have that all the way to one side and there's enough room to put a smaller box that houses the battery monitor shunt. Um, the way I accomplished this is I got a uh, 2x10 piece of pressure treated lumber and I ripped that 2x10 <clears throat> excuse me, two by 10 down to 2x8, an actual 8 inches wide, and that fit snugly inside of the, the metal tray where the battery is supposed to be mounted. Um, and then that heavy duty box I got uh, the box is just screwed onto the uh, pressure treated lumber and also the small box with the containing the shunt is screwed into the pressure treated lumber. Uh, it's a very stable system. It lets me fit uh, everything there on the tongue of the trailer. All right, so mounting the shunt on the tongue of the trailer was pretty straightforward once I came up with that plan uh, for the box I was gonna use and the box I used for my batteries. It allowed me space and a place to mount uh, the shunt. And then to run the data cable, I had to run a data cable all the way from where the shunt is on the tongue of the trailer to the inside of the trailer where the display head is mounted. Now, uh, if you get a battery monitor that has Bluetooth, you may not necessarily need to worry about running uh, the data cable very far because you can just put the display head wherever it's convenient to put it. It could be out of sight and then you can uh, view what's going on with your batter battery monitor via Bluetooth connection with your smartphone, the app on your smartphone. Uh, I've heard some people doing that and they're very happy with that solution. But me, I like having the display head of the battery monitor inside the trailer and I've got it mounted uh, by my other controls. What I did was I routed the cable uh, along the bottom of the trailer. I zip tied it. Um, well, first I put it in a protective loom uh, and then I zip tied that to the propane line that runs underneath the trailer. Uh, where the propane line comes into the trailer. Uh, I also brought the data cable in at that location. Um, I had to take apart a few cabinets uh, and I had to fish some wires through the wall, uh, but I was able to mount the, the battery monitor display head uh, right next to the other controls for the other systems in the trailer. And it uh, wasn't that much effort. Uh, maybe it took me about an hour, hour and a half tops. And I'm very happy with the outcome.
All right, so that about wraps it up for today's video on battery monitors. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Feel free to comment and subscribe.